بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We begin as always with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa taala by sending salutations upon the Messenger of Allah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his family and his companions and all those who follow him until the last day. Okay, we are. We've got some new people in the class today, and we're going through a book that deals with the rulings of Islam. And Subhanallah, it's such a Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has presented us with such an excellent opportunity because the plan today was to talk about the purification for the prayer, the wudu. And I'm going to talk about it, but I want to do it from a very practical point of view. So I asked the brothers for a bucket of water. We want to do the wudu from a practical point of view, and I'm going to go outside of the book today. So I'm not really going to pay much attention to the book today because we have um, one of the new Muslims uh, with us, and likewise we have a gentleman who came to the masjid who is interested in accepting Islam. We also have uh, the first lesson on wudu, which I think to be practical, it should be something practical, and this is one of the. Examples that have been set for us by the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The first narration in this book about wudu is the narration of Uthman ibn Affan. How did Uthman teach the wudu? He taught the wudu by asking for a bucket of water and by doing the wudu in front of all of the people. So we want to 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 go over the basics of the wudu today. Right down to the most, you know, the most basic uh, and the most, uh, the 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 most fundamental parts of the wudu, and we are going to go outside of the book. So we're going to cover some things that are not in the book today, just because we want to give a complete picture of the wudu to those people who are new, those people who are looking to accept Islam, and also as a recap for all of the Muslims, because we know that. There are many times we see our Muslim brothers and sisters making mistakes when it comes to the wudu, so it doesn't hurt to have a recap for everybody, inshallah. The first thing that we want to begin with is what is the wudu? The wudu, the wudu is the purification for the prayer, and I'm going to simplify it for now and leave it at that. It is the purification that you need in order to pray. You need it for some other things as well, but for the time being, we're looking at the purification you need in order to pray. And that purification needs to be done so that a person is ready to perform the prayer. And if they were to perform the prayer without that, then their prayer uh, would not be valid. Of course, we know the new Muslims at the moment are learning this, so it's not a problem. But we know that uh, in the future we want to get them to a stage where for every prayer they are in a state of proper purification. And there are certain things that break the wudu. But for now we're just going to keep it pretty simple. Okay, with the things that break the wudu. We're going to keep it pretty simple for now. For the sake, again, we're going to cover this in our class in more detail later on. But for the sake of the new Muslims and when you're explaining Islam to somebody, and you want to keep it simple, then to be really simple, the things that break the wudu in a very summarized form, everything that comes out of the front or the back passage, in addition to going to sleep. That's basically what, it, what breaks your wudu. So urinating, breaking wind, going to the toilet, um, you know, uh, anything, even if someone has a problem where they're bleeding from the front or the back passage, anything that comes out of the front, anything that comes out of the back, and unconsciousness through sleep, fainting, you know, anything like that. That is essentially what breaks the wudu. So any kind of uh, sort of uh, 
any sort of discharge, whether it's from the front or from the back, and likewise you're, you're going to sleep or you're being unconscious, breaks the wall. So this is established for us, as, and we'll be simplifying it today, okay? We'll, we'll go into some other things later on, but we'll keep it simple for today. We'll keep it very, very simple for today. So if, for example, one of us uses the bathroom, or one of us breaks wind, or one of us goes to sleep, and then after that they want to pray, then they need to make the purification for the prayer. And the basic means of purifying yourself for the prayer requires water. That's the basic means. Now there is a backup, and we know about this. There's a backup for when you don't have water. There's a backup for, you know, if, you, if, you're, if your water isn't working, or if you can't find water, or if you're stuck in the middle of the desert, and you're, you know, two days from water, there's a backup. We'll talk about that in another class. But for today, and of course for us, you know, alhamdulillah, we are in a situation where water is very plentiful and we don't really have a problem getting hold of water, so we need some water. And it doesn't matter whether it's a bucket of water like this, or whether you do it from the tap, the actions are all the same. However, in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, in the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they would not have taps. They would have something like a bucket of water. And it would be smaller than this. This is too much water. To, you don't need this much water to, to make wudu. But some, somewhere around you, sort of a half a litre to 750 ml of water, something like that. But of course we have the taps and you just leave the tap on long enough for you to be able to make the wudu. Now the wudu begins with what? What does the wudu begin with? Who can tell me what the wudu begins with? The intention. Very good. Someone's awake. So you have to have the intention. What does the intention mean? What does it mean to have the intention for wudu? It doesn't mean for you to say anything. It just means that if I stopped you and said to you, Muhammad, what are you doing? What are you doing? You'd say, okay, I'm making wudu. The fact that you consciously know you're actually making the purification for the prayer means that you, are, you have your intention. Now let me give you an example to make this even clearer. Sometimes, you know because we do our purification for the prayer a lot, and most people, maybe we don't quite do it five times a day because we might keep the, we might, you know, keep the, the state of purification for a while, but you might do it four times a day or three times a day. When you're doing your purification for the prayer, it becomes so automatic and so robotic, what happens? That sometimes you go to the bathroom and you're just washing your hands, and then you're washing your hands and you start washing your mouth and then you just... And before you know it, you, you're, you're doing the actions of the wudu. But you haven't made any intention, you don't know, what you, you're just basically on robot mode. Of just, you know, you don't even think about, that's not, you need to have in your mind consciously that I am preparing myself for the prayer and making the, the purification for the prayer. Okay, so you need to have that in your mind, that's the intention. And then you need to say, Bismillah. Now again for the new Muslims, all of these words are things they're going to have to learn, but it doesn't matter. For now, do your best. Bismillah means in the name of Allah. So if you can't say it in Arabic, then you can say it in English. In the name of Allah. Bismillah. And then you need to go to step one. And the interesting thing about step one is that step one isn't a part of the actual wudu. Step one is to wash your hands three times, your right hand three times, and your left hand three times. To wash your hands, your right hand three times, and your left hand three times. And when we say your hand, generally we mean just past the wrist to the tip of the finger. So we're talking about washing quite thoroughly your hands three times, the right three times and the left three times. But this isn't a part of the wudu. This is like a beginning for the wudu. Why? What do you notice about the difficulty when you don't have a tap of making wudu in a bucket like this? The difficulty is that your hands are dirty. And then you go and put your hands into the water and your hands are dirty. And the whole water becomes dirty. 
So the example we have, or the way that we make wudu, is the first thing we would do if we were making it from a bucket, is to wash our hands three times, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it for you, even if it does make a little bit of a mess on the table. I'm sure it'll dry out by the time the sheikh uses it tomorrow. So what you want to do, is you want to take the bucket this way, and two, and I'm not going to use a great deal of water because I'm going to make a mess. And you've done one. You've used some water, you've washed your hands once. That's one. Okay, you need to take a little bit more water. I'm going to try not to make too much of a mess. And there you've got two. And you're going to repeat that three times on the right, and then again three times on the left. Now, if you're using uh, a tap, you don't really need to worry about pouring the water six times in total. But if you're using a bucket, then you do need to make sure that it's three full times on the right and three full times on the left. If you're using a tap, perhaps the easy way to do it is just to put your hand under, wash it, put your hand under, wash it, put your hand under, wash it. There's your three times, and then your left hand side. That's your preparation. Until now, you haven't started the wudu. Until now, you haven't started making wudu. All you've done is just get ready for the wudu. So we'll recap three things. You did your intention, which means that you knew you, what you were doing. You weren't thinking about, you know, what am I making for the tea? And just going, you know, you knew what you were doing. And you said, Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah. And you washed your hands, your right hand three times and your left hand three times. The rest of the wudu you can make by putting your hand into the bucket because now you've washed your hands you can begin the wudu. And you're going to begin the wudu with the very first part of the wudu itself, which is to wash the mouth and the nose. How do you wash the mouth and the nose? You take a handful of water. One hand, use your right hand, because in Islam we use our right hand for cleanly things like uh, that are to do with acts of worship and cleanliness and things like that. So you're going to take a cup full of water in your hand. You're going to take that water into your mouth by sipping it and then sniffing it up your nose. Okay, so I'm going to break it down again. So you can see, I'm going to swallow this water because otherwise it's going to make a terrible mess. You're going to sip the water into your mouth and you're going to sniff the water into your nose. You're going to swill the water around your mouth and gargle. Okay? So you suck the water into your mouth. You've got some water in your mouth. In the same hand, you sniff it into your nose. Now it's one it's one kind of it's one kind of action. Instead of doing it twice, one for your water, one for, it's just one handful of water. And if you actually if you actually do it in one go, it's actually you don't swallow the water, but I'm just trying not to make a mess in the rest of So you take the water into your mouth and you bring the water up your nose. At this point, you should feel you've got plenty of water in your mouth and you've got plenty of water in your nose. At this point, what you need to do, you need to swill the water around your mouth. We call this al-madmada. Swill the water around your mouth and gargle. And of course, you don't gargle when you're fasting because that would let the water go down your throat, but you gargle. Then, what you're going to do is to expel the water from your nose, okay? Which is to blow it out of your nose like this. Blow it out of your nose, so that all of that water that was brought into your nose gets blown out. Of course, I'm taking a very long time to explain it, but actually, when you're doing it, it's a pretty much instantaneous. And then you spit the water out of your mouth. Okay, so then you spit the water out of your mouth. So now we're going to do this one more time. You're going to take the water up in your hand. And spit the water out. You're going to do that entire process three times. So... Okay? Three times. Okay? Three times. Now you've cleaned your mouth and you've cleaned your nose. You've cleaned your mouth and you've cleaned your nose. And we said the correct opinion is 
to do it with one hand, not with two, to do it with your right hand, and to do it all in one motion, not to do one cup for the mouth and one for the nose, but to do it all in one motion. Then expel, gargle, and spit. That's your mouth and your nose. The next thing you're going to do is your face. And your face is right from the top of your hairline to the bottom of your beard if you have one. Okay, so from right from the top of your hairline down to the bottom of your chin, including the beard if you have one. This is all your face. And from all the way to ear to ear. Okay, so from the top to the bottom and from ear to ear. All of it needs to get wet. Okay, again, I'm going to show you and you're going to do it three times. So you're going to take your two hands and you can see that in that wudu there, the water is reaching all the way from the top of the head right down to the tip of including the wiping over the beard and from the two ears, one side to the other. Okay, and you're going to do that three times. Okay, on the third time, if you have a particularly thick beard, or indeed if you have a beard at all, you need to run your fingers through your beard, okay? Which is to take some water, if your hands are already wet, or to take some water, and to put your fingers through and get the water right onto the, the chin. And this is called taqlil al putting your fingers through your beard and cleaning the beard. Now that needs to be done that needs to be done once during the wudu, but you need to wipe over your beard because the beard is a part of the face. So you need to wipe over the face and that's going to be three times. So let's go back to the beginning. We started with our hands. Before the wudu we did our hands. Okay? It's not it's not gonna make any difference bro it's gonna make a mess whatever you do. It's gonna make a mess whatever you do but it's worth it inshallah. So our hands three times, right and left. And if you're using a bucket, you're going to do it from outside of the bucket. Then your mouth and your nose. And we said, you take your right hand, bring it into your mouth, into your nose, blow it out of your nose, swill it around your mouth, gargle and spit. And that's going to be three times. Then the face, three times. Okay, from the very tip, all the way down to the bottom, and the both sides of both ears, three times each. Okay, three times each. Then, you're going to do your arms. Now, there's a couple of mistakes a lot of Muslims are going to make. And not so much new Muslims, but old Muslims are going to make these mistakes usually. And that is that they get confused about washing their hands. They think they've already washed their hands, but they haven't already washed their hands. The time you were washing your hands in the beginning was before the actual purification. The washing of the hands in the purification happens at this point now. And what you're going to do, there are, I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you actually wash from the tip of your finger to past your elbow, you're fine. However you wash it, if you run it under the tap or if you put it in the sink. But the sunnah in terms of doing it is to do this. Scoop up and let it run down the hand, come back up and get in between the fingers, okay? So you've ended up all the way from here down to here. From here down to here. It's gotta go past the elbow. So when you look at it after three times, your elbow should be wet, past your elbow should be wet. It shouldn't be like that, because I didn't, wet, I didn't wash anything there. All I did is just wipe it. It needs to be, and if you do it properly, then you can see that it ends up completely wet, my arm is completely soaked, all the way from past the elbow to the tip of the finger. And you do that three times on your right hand side, and then three times on your left hand side. So again, we're going like this. One, make sure you get your hands. This is where a lot of Muslims make mistakes, because what the Muslims do is, they wash from the wrist to the elbow, and this is a mistake. At this point here, you need to wash from the tip of the finger to past the elbow. So one mistake people make is they only wash up to their elbow without going past, 
And another mistake people make is they wash from the wrist instead of washing all the way to the tips of the fingers. You can do it however you want, if you put your arm under the tap or however you feel most comfortable, but the sunnah, the best way to do it is to scoop up the water, let the water run all the way down, and just make sure that the water's gone everywhere with your hands. Three times on the right, three times, exactly the same thing on the left. And by that time, it should be well and truly wet. The next point, we're getting to the end now, very, very near, is to wipe over the head. Now, all of the others up to now have been washing. We've been washing our hands and washing our face and washing our mouth, washing our arms, but we haven't, this now we're up to is wiping. So what you're going to do is, wet your hands. Okay, wet your hands. They do not need to hold any water in. They just need to be dipped in the water until they're wet. Start at the front of your head. Go all the way back with both hands to the back, not the neck, and all the way forward again. Wet your hands. Just one time, one time only. From the front to the back, and back to the front again. That's all you need to do. You do not need to wash your head. You do not need to wipe your neck. It's not allowed for you to wipe your neck like some Muslims, they wipe their neck after that. Don't wipe your neck. From the front to the back, and back again to the front again. Okay? So that's now you've wiped, you've wiped your head. Okay? Without taking any more water, without wetting your hands again, put your index fingers inside your ear, not right inside your ear, just inside the outer part of your ear and your thumbs at the back. Use the thumb, use the thumb, I have to turn to the microphone, use the thumb to clean the outside of the ear and the index finger to clean the inside of the ear. You only need to do it once. So we'll remind ourselves about that step. We've just washed our hands and our arms. Dip your fingers in, get your hands wet, start at the front, go to the back, back to the front, and there you go. Index finger cleans the inside of the ear, thumbs clean the outside of the ear. The only thing you have left is to wash your feet. The only thing you have left is to wash your feet. And washing the feet again needs to be past the ankle. It needs to be past the ankle. So it's not for you to wash, you know, just the bottom of your feet, but you need to wash your feet thoroughly. And you need to go in between your toes because the water in general won't get to where you want it to get. So what you need to do is you need to make sure, can I come around the front? I have socks on. But you need to make sure that when you wash, you go past the ankle and you use your small finger to go in between the toes. Also, another mistake people make is they don't wash their feet. They just get them wet. You need to actually wash your feet. You need to actually have your feet washed three times on the right and three times on the left. Three times on the right and three times on the left. I'm going to add one thing okay, to this. And that is, well actually no, we're not, we'll, we'll deal with that next lesson because I think if we get too far, we're going to complicate things, we want to keep things simple. So what I want to do for you now, is the brother's kindly given me another bucket. So inshallah, what I want to do for you now is to do the wudu in full, from beginning to end, without any commentary, so that you guys can see it from beginning to end. Again, um... You know, this is as close to the sunnah as we know, but we're trying to get it as good as we can. But you get the idea. The theory is more important, but at least you can see it. You, know, you can see what happens. So we begin by having the intention to actually purify ourselves for the prayer, and by saying Bismillah, or in the name of Allah. And then what we're going to do is, the very first thing we're going to do, is we're going to wash our hands three times. Now if we're making it from a bucket, we want to wash our hands outside of the bucket. So, and if you're using a tap, it's not so difficult. 
is 1. Three. And then again, we want to do the same thing for the other side. One. Two. And if you're making it from a bucket, that's the only time you need to pour the water. After that, you can stick your hands in, stick your legs in, whatever it is you want to do. But for the first bit, you, you wash your hands outside. And the idea is to get your hands clean so that you can put them into the bucket. But obviously, if you have a tap, you don't have that problem. Okay? So then we start with these. Go to the mouth and the nose. Listen. That's our mouth and our nose three times. Then we have the face. Including the last one with the beard. And then we have the arms and hands. Sure to go all the way past the elbows. Then we wet our hands, wipe over the pump to the back and our ears, and then I'm going to wipe over my socks, which we'll talk about next week. But we'll talk about wiping over the socks next week. But if you are making a full wudu here, what you would do is you would wash your right foot three times, making sure to go in between the toes and your left foot three times, making sure in both cases to go over the ankles and in between the toes. And that, inshallah, completes the model. <laughs> now what I'm going to do now for you, inshallah, just to conclude the lesson, and before we tidy up the lesson, we made, inshallah we're going to read the same hadith from Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. So we're going to read the we're going to read the narration of the description of the wudu in the same way. Now this isn't the most complete because there are there are going to be bits missing because this is just one narration and there are many 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 narrations that we're going to cover as we're covering the chapter of wudu. But this is perhaps the most complete of them and so we can listen and as I usually do I'll read it for you in Arabic and then inshallah ta'ala will read it in English as well. قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى باب صفة الوضوء وفرائضه وسننه عن يونس عن ابن شهاب عن عطاء بن يزيد الليثي قال أخبره عن عطاء بن يزيد الليثي أخبره أن أن حمران مولى عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه أخبره أن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه دعا بوضوء فتوضا فغسل كفيه ثلاث مرات ثم تمضمى واستنثر واستنشق ثم غسل وجهه ثلاث مرات ثم غسل يديه اليمنى إلى المرفق ثلاث مرات ثم غسل يده اليسرى مثل ذلك ثم مسح رأسه ثم غسل رجله اليمنى إلى الكعبين ثلاث مرات ثم غسل رجله اليسرى مثل ذلك ثم قال رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم توضأ نحو وضوء هذا ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من توضأ نحو وضوء هذا ثم قام فركع ركعتين لا يحدث فيهما نفسه غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه قال ابن شهاب وكان علماؤنا يقولون هذا الوضوء أسبغ ما يتوضأ به أحد للصلاة 
متفق عليه وهذا لفظ مسلم وقال البخاري ثم تمضمض واستنشق واستنثر. So this narration is narrated by Yunus from Ibn Shihab from Atta ibn Yazid al Layfi that Humran, Mawla Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, informed that Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, called for a bucket of water. He called for wudu. He asked for some water to make wudu with. Then he washed his hands three times. So we showed you the washing of the hands three times. Then he swilled the water around his mouth. Then he took the water into his nose and blew the water out of his nose. Then he washed his face three times. Then he washed his right hand all the way up to the elbow three times. Then he washed his left hand the same number of times. Then he wiped over his head. Then he washed his right foot all the way up to the ankles three times. Then he washed his left foot in the same way. Then he said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, make wudu in this way, or similar to the way that I did. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever makes wudu in a similar way to mine, then he stands and prays two units of the prayer. He does not uh, busy himself with anything else. He does not preoccupy himself with anything else. All of his previous sins will be forgiven. Ibn Shihab said, our scholars said, this wudu is the most complete wudu that anyone can make for the prayer. And this is recorded by a Bukhari Muslim. That this wudu is the most complete wudu that you can make for the prayer. You can't make a wudu more complete than this wudu. It is the most complete and the most the best way of making wudu that you can. You can go shorter than that, which we'll talk about later on, but this is the most complete way that you can make wudu for the prayer. And this also tells us about the virtue of praying to rak'ah after you make wudu. And that is that you make your wudu and then you pray two units of the prayer. And as for the, you know, for the benefit of the new Muslims who are with us today, you saw the prayers broken down into, into sort of parts that all of the, that, or sets of actions that are all kind of the same. We call these a unit of the prayer. And that involves the, uh, the, the standing, the bowing, the standing up, one prostration, sitting, and another prostration. That's a unit of the prayer. So two of those, then all of your previous sins are forgiven. So this is a great virtue of the wudu and making the wudu. And uh, once again, we want to say jazakallah khairan to the brothers in the masjid for allowing us to, uh, to show you the wudu, inshallah ta'ala. And we hope that that's been of benefit to recap for everybody. And inshallah, we're going to return to our normal lesson next week because they're not normally this practical. They're normally a bit theoretical. But inshallah, we'll return back to that next week. But this week, I wanted to do the same that Uthman did for, did for the people he was teaching. And that is to show you the actual wudu instead of just narrating it to you. Okay? So inshallah, what we will do, uh, we don't normally give, give uh, time for question and answers in these sessions, but we take question and answers afterwards from people privately. So inshallah, if anyone has any questions, we'll just let them chat to us inshallah after we finish and we'll wrap it up there because we don't normally take that long inshallah, okay? Alright. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu illa ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa